Hi everyone, Christine here. Today we're going to hit a really heavy topic. It's something that I consider to be depression's most taboo topic, and that is suicide. So I generally get these ideas on what we should talk about from um, something that I've read. And this one's no different. So I've seen a quote floating around Facebook and floating around uh, Instagram that really caught my eye and made me think. And that quote is, always help someone. You may be the only one who does. And in personal experience, I found that to be very, very true. Um, when I'm having a rough day, sometimes it's just something simple. Somebody saying sending me a text and checking in or um, sending me a joke um, that turns my day around. So always look for opportunities where you can uh, provide a simple gesture to somebody that may be struggling. <coughs> Excuse me. Because um, you have no idea what that person's going through. And sometimes it's just something very small and kind that will really turn their day around. So into the nuts and bolts of the topic, last November, I was hospitalized for a week. Uh, I told people that I was hospitalized because I was extremely anemic. I had very low vitamin D and my blood pressure was high. And while all those things were true, they were not the reason that I was hospitalized. They were things I was treated for while I was hospitalized, but not the reason that I was. And the reason that I was is because I attempted suicide. And I was ashamed of myself, so I told people a fraction of the story. I realized that these stories need to get out there so that um, people can understand how commonplace they are. Um, depression is something that we have to talk about. Suicide is something that we have to talk about. Because it's only in the talking about things, in the education, um, that we learn to understand each other and we learn how to communicate and we learn how important it is to be gentle with each other. So a few statistics I want to get out here on the subject are things that I found on the CDC's website. This one shocked me a lot. Um, more than half of the people who commit suicide have never been diagnosed with a psychiatric disorder. And just stop and think about that. There's half of, more than half of the people. And that means <laughs> that obviously less than half of the people who commit suicide are somebody that has a psychiatric disorder. And I wonder then how many of those people are getting treatment. And those numbers staggered me because it shows you how huge the problem is just enormous um, which is why it needs to be talked about and it needs to be talked about every day and often the next statistic is that 42 percent of suicides are a result of relationship problems that to me tells me they are preventable that if we treat our relationships with love and kindness and generosity, uh, we could we could eliminate almost half of the suicides that are out there. So just keep that in mind. And then I live in the state of Wisconsin, so there was a, a statistic in there by state about how fast the suicide rates are rising. So in 1999 through 2016, Wisconsin saw its suicide rate go up by 26%. And that is also mind-boggling. Just mind-boggling. So, then I, you know, kind of thinking about those relationship problems and how they impact our lives, I wanted to talk a little bit about how we treat people that we love. And people have the power to hurt us with their words. And quite often, the people that we hurt the most are the people that we love. Because when you live in tight quarters or you're living through a stressful situation with somebody, the chances that um, there's going to be a lash out of some sort or another are higher. It just kind of 
If you're living alone and you don't have anybody to argue with, you're not going to have those relationship problems. So that was super true for me in this case. I hurt somebody that I love with an action that I felt was well intended, but that person was very hurt by my action. And that person lashed out at me. And the, for lack of a better term, problem with lashing out at somebody that you are close to is that you know what to do to cut them the fastest and the deepest and that's exactly what happened so that lashing out made me think that my family was better off without me um, it was a horrible rough night so as I laid there by myself um, thinking about what I had done to somebody that I love and what they felt about it. Um, I, could, I couldn't bear to be the person that was responsible for that kind of pain. So I took a handful of pills, probably 10 days worth of my medications, and I went to sleep praying that I wasn't going to wake up. So, gosh, that was a terrible day. Um... When I woke up the next morning, I was immediately full of regret. And even though I knew what I did was wrong, I couldn't get the thoughts out of my head that my family deserved better than me. They deserved somebody who wasn't going to hurt them. They deserved somebody that could be happy. And I was in a place where I really wasn't ever happy. <clears throat> so... I talked to my husband, Chad, and we went through the process of checking me into a mental health facility where I spent that week. It, I, it was something that I needed to do to protect myself, and I recognized that. Um, I needed to be somewhere that was safe, and it did that for me. So after I was released, um, my therapist and I agreed that my sessions needed to go from bi-weekly to weekly, so we did that for quite a while. And the first <laughs> the first uh, time I went back, I took Dave, my therapist, a slice of homemade apple pie. And I did that, and I called it a peace offering because I knew he wasn't going to be happy with me. <laughs> oh, I knew he was going to be mad. And he wasn't mad mad. Um, he was upset that I didn't feel like I could reach out to him. Um, he was upset that I didn't reach out to anybody, actually. Um, but he wasn't angry with me, and that was a surprise to me. I expected that. <clears throat> but he was kind and gentle with me, and he asked me something very profound. And he said, Christine, let's talk about this. What are your, what are your reasons for living? And the first thing that came out of my mouth was my family. And he said, so, in a moment of weakness... You thought that your family, who loves you, was better off without you. But what you didn't think about was the anguish that you were going to put them through by killing yourself. And it, that was a kind and necessary um, snap back to reality for me. So we talked about the issue that happened and... Um, one of my goals for 2019 is to do what I can to um, eliminate misplaced guilt. And that's what this um, entire incident was about, was guilt. Um, so we, we've been talking a lot about that and working through it. And that's been very helpful. So that's my story. Um, the final thought that I want to leave you with is actually another quote and that quote is uh, sticks and stones can break your bones but words can break your soul and that's attributed to Git Falkenberg and then always 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 remember that if you're in a rough place 
The National Suicide Prevention Line is there 24-7, and their number is 800-273-TALK, TALK. And um, for the younger generation or those of us who would prefer to text, there is actually a crisis text line that you can use. So you can text somebody anytime, day or night, um, and they'll be there for you. And that number is 741741. Be kind to each other. It makes a huge difference. Thanks.